Circuit Guru is with Intel in Berlin for their global launch of Core Ultra 200V, or as we prefer to think of it, Lunar Lake. This is brand new architecture, which has four P calls and four E calls, but no hyperthreading, so eight threads in total. This demo here is talking about the special connectivity that they have. So we have a new Thunderbolt with Thunderbolt Share. Wi-Fi 7 is going to be in every single one of these laptops, they tell us. And it will be a super fast experience. It looks as though it's going to be Wi-Fi 7 5G rather than 6G. But Thunderbolt, always fun to see. Moving on. Software is a huge theme. And here we have security. And oh look, it's a deep fake with Mark Zuckerberg. The obvious question, how can we tell whether or not it's a deep fake? Mark Zuckerberg doesn't exactly look entirely human, so this strikes me as an unfair test of software. More Intel Core Ultra 200 going. What does this show? Ah, oh, gaming on Core Ultra 200. Lovely job. I wasn't sure about the when I saw the previous panel. Intel is making bold claims about gaming on Core Ultra 200. The new XE2 graphics look impressive. They were showing us benchmark figures at 1080p on medium presets, and they claim the experience is good. I noticed on, nothing is actually still. moving on these laptops, all static. That is a bit curious. Ah, but here we go, driving sims. Now on the left, we have AMD Strix Point. On the right, we have Core Ultra 200. And look, it's essentially a dead heat. 50 FPS on both sides, dipping to low 40s and then drop, and then raising to approximately 60. So a range of 40 to 60. Intel is claiming they have a gaming experience in the new ultra low power laptops. That's quite a bold claim because really the major claim here is AI, so gaming is a significant part of this new chip. No sooner have I said AI than I see Open Vino. There's going to be a lot of this going on over the next few hours. There's the laptop in question, and there's the screen. The point about AI on the Core Ultra 200 is it's spread equally between the CPU, GPU, and NPU. It's not all about the NPU. Sorry, what do we have around here? Aha. Some technical stuff, 4 Ultra 7 258V, powering away at 2.56 gigahertz, but utilization a mere 12%. Not actually doing anything. That's a strange demo. But that's the first time I'm seeing CPU Z on Core Ultra 200. Graphics inside Core Ultra 200. We have Intel Arc 140V, the other was 130V, 16 gigabytes of memory rather than 32 gigabytes. 16 gig rather than 32 gig on your demo. System memory is 32, uh, but on the GPU. Yeah. Excellent, thank you. Stupid question by me. So 32 gig system memory, 16 on the graphics. And another demo, AI generating photos. Tell it what you want to generate, so click the button, and away you go. And it's a question of how quickly it can generate the image that you want, and whether or not the image actually looks any good to you. It's fair to say these images are more cartoony than entirely realistic, but they are certainly images, that's for sure. And you'll note they're comparing to Core Ultra H, i.e. previous gen. We're going to see a huge amount of AI demos today and over the next months and years. And this looks like a text-to-text -text demo. Possibly it's taking text out of video. Again, AI. Oh, and a gaming demo. That looks quite cute. To close out, the key thing about these AI demos, because obviously we're all sick and tired of the sound of the words AI, is that Robert Halleck, formerly AMD and now Intel, tells us, in his opinion, every single piece of software we touch in three years' time will use AI to a lesser or greater extent. We found a room that has music playing, that has a number of Intel Core Ultra 200V laptops. Over there we have the software people. Laptops, 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 laptops. Let's move in to the ASUS ZenBooks. Now the thing is, 
and being slightly rude about the thing. These chassis all look quite familiar because, of course, Asus and other companies have been able to more or less reuse the chassis from existing laptops. This is the Asus ZenBook 14 S14 we've heard quite a lot about. Uh, we saw something very similar uh, with AMD just recently using this Serra aluminum material, which sounds a bit jokey, and we have all the key features we'd expect, such as Wi-Fi 7. The 1.1 centimeters thickness is going to depend where you measure it, 1.2 kilos. 14-inch touchscreen, 3K 120 hertz. Very sleek. The lid is just razor blade thin. Nice styling around the back, but let's get around to the business side. Hang on, let's wait there. Oh, hang on, we've got a video playing. So we'll ignore that, and we're going to look at the features. And of course, we have the up to 48 tops on the NPU, which is just there. And the Arc graphics next to that are the new Arc graphics, which are part of Core Ultra 200V. Looking forward to getting our hands on that specific laptop for review. Weight, very light, 1.2 kilos. This is, of course, for thin and light with Intel graphics, not add-in graphics. We go around, we go past this chap here. And we can see, what model is this Acer? The Swift 14 AI. Swift 14 AI, of course. Yes, yes of course, AI. The Acer Swift 14 AI, they're in a slightly dark corner with a window behind it, but the laptop itself is a very stylish grey. We've had a bit of debate about the exact thinness or thickness because it depends where you measure it. I'm just going to tip it on its back because if you measure it just there, it's really, really thin. But when you look at it in the hole, in the round, it is clearly thin and light. This year, Intel graphics only, adding graphics not this year. Uh, so next year will be the logical thing. And yes, Copilot Plus will be available as an over-the-air download on this model in the very near future. Uh, weight uh, was one and a quarter kilos. We'll be told the price tomorrow. For the moment, we're being told similar to Qualcomm. Personally, I thought the Qualcomm was slightly too expensive. So that suggests that this will be slightly too expensive. I'd like to say that Acer is committing it to be cheaper than Qualcomm, but they're not saying that, not in the slightest. Ha! Huh. Samsung Galaxy Book 5 Pro 360. That's a hell of a name. I haven't seen a Samsung laptop in I don't know when. And again, thin and light. So we have a magnetic pencil, which I thought was some sort of bizarre extra feature on the lid, but it's not. It's just hanging on, I think. An incredibly bright screen. Is that OLED? Uh, it's what we call dynamic amyloid 2x okay so, dynamic amyloid no less yeah, well, yeah, very, yeah, yeah. Well, okay it's eye, it's eye catching it's, it's like a samsung tv yes so, cool. so as of this evening available on pre-order at samsung.com for 1699 pounds including vat and you get your hands on it a couple of weeks after i have to say that yeah. is impressive. Yeah, it, My it, recollection it of Samsung long, notebooks yeah. was nothing yeah. like this. Yeah. And the screen was amazing. Yeah. Our friends at MSI, what model is this? Uh, Prestige 13. Prestige 13, yeah. thank you. So we have a Prestige 13 powered by obviously Intel Core Ultra 200 V because that's what this is all about. What's the weight on that? 990 grams. Oh, you've broken the kilo. Well yeah. done. Okay. Under a kilo, Under a kilo 990 grams. We go around, two Thunderbolt 4 ports, despite yeah. the tiny chassis and also the low weight, and what's the price? This is the Ultra 7 version, one terabyte storage, 32 gigabytes of RAM, priced at 1,500 euros, presumably plus the tax. So when it lands in the UK, let's guess 1,500 pounds, because that seems to be how it goes. Looks interesting. Dell XPS 13s, two of them, different colors, however. Claiming up to 26 hours of battery life, obviously it depends what it's doing. 32 gig up to 32 gigabytes of RAM on the SOC and the whole range of Ultra 5, Ultra 7 and Ultra 9 processors. Don't think Intel's yet talked about the Ultra 5, although I'm sure we saw it on the feeds and speeds table, which they showed at the end of their presentation. And the weight 2.6 pounds, they're obviously American, so that is more than a kilo. Do the maths in my head, 1.4 kilos, I think. 
Uh, looks nifty. Can we go around the side? One port right at the back. This model has one Thunderbolt 4 on each side for both power and data. Uh, there is a USB-C to A dongle in the box for Luddites who have old school products. However, if you need more connectivity, you're going to be buying one of the other Dells from the range. This is very thin, fairly light, and it's absolutely minimalist. Kick Guru is in one of the demo rooms for Core Ultra 200V. What they are showing here is 4K YouTube AV1 playback, and you'll note the power drill they're demonstrating is total system power, and they're capturing that system power with this clever little USB-C gizmo right here. And the point is to demonstrate that Meteor Lake requires 11 or so watts, 11 to 12 watts total system power, while Lunar Lake can get by on six or seven watts total system power. However, over here, we have an up against the competition comparison. So we have two Core Ultra models, one one is Core Ultra 7 258V, the other is Core Ultra 9288V, and you can see there what the CPU package power is doing. CPU package rather than system, 18 and 27 relatively. We've also got AMD down bottom right, 28 or so. Bottom left is Qualcomm. Qualcomm doesn't break out their CPU power within uh, apps such as HW Info. It's a, a closed ecosystem, and we can see that information now over here, which is shown as total system power. So we have system and CPU power for Intel, Intel, AMD, Qualcomm, we've only got system power. And again, we have these cutesy little USB-C power meters powering away. So the point is, those systems are all playing a game, and they're playing that game perfectly competently, but they're using different amounts of power in the process. Intel is really, really confident that Core Ultra 200 is going to set a new benchmark across the piece. And we go to F124, and we were playing with this earlier. I took some fairly shocking phone video, which was showing the Intel system running in the Singapore benchmark in the rain, which hurts the frame rate. Uh, when this demo kicks off, we expect to see about 60, I believe, FPS. Uh, when you turn up the intensity, as we did in the rain, it dropped to about 40. But the experience was pretty blooming good. Uh, and you won't be shocked to learn that uh, the thesis here is the Intel best. Qualcomm for games, not so good. And then this demo is showing, not surprisingly, that with Adobe uh, software, the appropriate Adobe software, you can use AI to make things better with your new AI Lunar Lake 200V laptop. So this demo room has suddenly emptied out. It was full of other people a moment ago, and we're getting ready for the next part of our tour. And the final suite of Intel benchmarks. So here we have AI, it's open Vino time. We move across to Geekbench AI, and we have stable diffusion, and this is creating an image of a raccoon in a jar of jelly beans or other sweets, because that's the sort of thing that you do. And we go around further, And here we have a side-by-side -side test going on. On the left, we have Meteor Lake. On the right, we have Core Ultra 200V. And the point, obviously, is that the new one, despite the fact it has many fewer threads, is pounding away on very little power. And they've been normalized to both run at about 30 watts. So it is an even level playing field. And surprise, surprise, the new chip wins. And we have one of these clever USB-C dongles we've already seen, which is showing as a power meter, but those same figures are replicated here. So this is the Meteor Lake processor hard at work. And we can see here 30 bouncing up sometimes to 35, but in-depth analysis, and we go across. And actually, to my eyes, that's running on less power. They're not normalized. The new one's running on far less power. There we go. Impressive, there we go. Okay, that's now gone up to just under 30, cycling 25 to 30 watts by eye. Holy moly, that's not a lot of power. Nifty. And then we go across to some gaming. 
The thing is, 1080p at medium IQ. This is Tomb Raider, and we can see their average 73 FPS. Chopped along very nicely. Cyberpunk, just over 60. And we're running a ray tracing test here in 3D Mark, which will take a little while to load and then start running. But when it was running previously, it looked very pretty. And it was actually more, here we go. And it was more than a moving slideshow. And that in itself was quite impressive. Clearly Intel has picked the benchmarks that are going to look good for this. They'd be fools to do otherwise. But the fact they can pick mainstream current games, well, Tomb Raider's not a current game, but Cyberpunk certainly is, and a bang up to date ray tracing demo, that's impressive stuff.